We've taken a look at plenty of 8-bit do controllers in the past, and when the folks at GearBest.com said that they were going to send in 8-bit do's latest controller, the SF30 Pro Gamepad, I was pretty excited. Because this thing here not only looks like a modern controller, but it still looks like a Super Nintendo controller, or Super Famicom with the colored buttons. Does this surpass everything they've released before, or is it worse? Let's find out. If you're a longtime watcher of ReRes, you probably know that I'm a pretty big fan of the 8-Bit Do controllers because they just seem to be so well designed. Great production quality goes into them so they never feel like they're made of cheap plastic, even though they are plastic controllers. And when they go to connect the things, you get such instant response to playing games that it always makes me feel like I'm using a wired controller. 8-Bit Do, in my mind, has set the bar for third-party controllers when trying to play anything wirelessly on retro systems. But unfortunately, one of the limitations for their controllers is that they've never really quite worked with modern video game systems. Now, yes, you could connect to a system here and there, and that's fine, but what I'm talking about is using it as the standard controller for your console so you never had to switch to anything else. And I believe that this controller right here, the SF30 Pro Gamepad, is the very first controller 8 Do has ever released that can officially replace one of the controllers for one of the main systems out there. To find out which one, though, you gotta keep watching. First up, let's talk about the design because I think that's something that's so striking about this controller. Many of us are very familiar with the Super Nintendo controller and we've never seen it with analog joysticks at the bottom. Compared to the original SNES controller, this one is just slightly thicker, but not uncomfortably thicker as you can see here, it's just a little bit because there's a lot more going on inside. Not only do you get these analog joysticks, but you also get motion sensing and you also get vibration motors inside. These are things you normally wouldn't see in an SNES controller and to be able to fit all of that into such a small package is pretty remarkable. Just like the original SNES controller, there's a slight slant, and that basically makes it easier to hold. And even though this controller is a little bit thicker, I almost feel like it's a little bit easier to hold just because of that. There are two models of the SF30 Pro gamepad out there, and the one that we got was a Super Famicom model with the colorful buttons. Now, the reason why I wanted that was because, well, I think those colorful buttons look better, obviously. Don't you? And if you don't, you're wrong. Also, they're convex instead of concave, which, you know, that's a personal preference, but for me, I prefer it this way. Another thing that's different compared to an original Super Nintendo controller is that this one here has four shoulder buttons instead of the standard two. Now, why I like this is because most modern video game controllers out there do usually have shoulder buttons, but they also have triggers as well. What this essentially means is that if you're playing a game on the PC that could be used with an Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller, now you can use this controller as a replacement, which I think is pretty cool because because typically, when you think about playing a PC game, you usually don't think about using an SNES-styled controller. But now, you can. Another thing I really like about this controller is that the L2 and R2 buttons are not like typical shoulder buttons you'd find on a real SNES controller. These ones are kind of curved in a little bit and feel very comfortable on your fingers, giving you a little bit more of a trigger feel that I think is just really cool. There may be a few of you out there that remember the FC30 Pro Game Controller and the NES30 Pro Game Controller I covered a little while ago on the show. Now, these these controllers almost had the same amount of buttons, but the analog sticks were very, very different. The ones on this newer controller are far bigger and feel way better. I loaded up a number of Android games just to see what everything would feel like, and I just really enjoyed the responsiveness of everything. When you were playing games, it felt like you just had a wired controller, which is typical of 8 Do's designs. But another thing I really liked was that using analog joysticks that kind of held so close to the buttons gave the entire controller a more compact feeling that I really wasn't expecting. Personally, while I like the feeling of this controller in my hands, if you have bigger hands, you might not like it too much. An Xbox 360, an Xbox One, a PlayStation 4 controller, and even the new Nintendo Switch Pro controller, well, those ones have handles, and those handles make it kind of easier to hold for people that have larger hands and even smaller hands. The SNES controller was never designed originally to have these kind of extra functions, so you might fumble a bit moving your fingers around and pushing buttons. I didn't really have that problem too much, but I just thought I'd address it anyway. As you might imagine, the retro receiver that 8 Do released a little while ago does work with this controller as well. So we used it on the SNES, and well, this was actually pretty cool. Each side of the controller has two individual shoulder buttons, so they just operate as the same one function you would have had on the original SNES controller. So depending on what you like, you can use the original flat one or the new trigger ones. And as you might imagine, that analog joystick to the left replicates the D-pad functionality. Now you don't get that slow build up or move down that you get with a real analog joystick because SNES games wouldn't know what to do with that functionality, but it does work directionally.
directionally so you can still use it while playing games. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so the controller works on PC, it works on mobile phones, and it also works on the SNES with that retro adapter. But what else can it work on? Well, the Switch. The Switch is probably the reason you wanna get this controller because it replicates every little bit of functionality the Pro Controller has besides NFC functionality, which I never really use directly on the controller anyway, so not a big loss for me. Now, two points here. The controller doesn't actually have HD rumble, it just has a typical vibration motor inside of it, and even though it still does rumble while playing Switch games, it's not groundbreaking like it was with the HD rumble you'd find on the original controllers. I also felt that the controller might have a smaller vibration motor in it just because it had to fit inside this very small package to begin with, so don't expect the most vibrating, rumbly thing in the world. And the second problem that you probably might not care about, but it did bug me a little bit, is that even when you get this thing to connect to the Switch, you won't be able to wake up the Switch with the controller. With a normal controller that Nintendo officially made for the system, you just push the home button a couple times, and, well, the system just wakes up from sleep state. But that's not gonna happen here, which really isn't the end of the world, it's just something to be aware of. I simply can't complain about any of the experiences I had playing any game with this controller. Everything just worked very, very well. And the controller's really good design and good feel just made it honestly feel like a first party controller straight from Nintendo. The only problem I had, and this is the only thing, is that very much like other 8-bit do controllers, trying to connect it to multiple devices, it kind of sucks. You either need to bring the manual around with you or just memorize the button combination inputs you need to put in just to connect to certain things. And even though the back of the controller does have a little design thing that tells you what you need to do for a specific device, it doesn't help too much because there might be an additional step or two after that. Outside of that though, that is probably the only issue I would have and once you have it connected, it doesn't matter. It will connect really fast time and time again every time you use the same device. The moment you switch it to a different device is the only time you'll run into that problem. The SF30 Pro is a great controller and I simply can't wait to see what 8-Bit Do creates next. So after all of that, I think you can understand when I say this is the best controller 8-Bit Do has ever made. Not only does it have analog sticks and a bunch of extra buttons allowing you to play on a bunch of newer systems, but this is just a very well solidly built controller that is just amazing. And considering how much I like all of 8-Bit Do's other controllers, saying this is the best one they've ever created is pretty high praise. All in all though, folks, if you get one of these, I think you're gonna love it. It's definitely not gonna be a wasted purchase.